Hello YouTube! Lately, I've seen a lot of people here on YouTube discussing the problems in higher education, specifically American colleges. It seems like there's been a recent increase in the number of college students demanding that administration protect them from being offended. They're demanding safe spaces for everyone except straight white males, and they seem to be completely intolerant of anyone who disagrees with their viewpoint. Most of the focus I've seen has in some ways rightly been pointed at mocking or expressing disbelief or disagreement with the student's attitude. I've also seen people focus on the faculty and administration as a cause of this problem, most notably in this video by Skeptor. Personally though, I don't think any of this analysis has gone deep enough to fully explain the problem and how to solve it. First off, let me say I agree with Skeptor that focusing on the students as the source of the problem is an error. They are young and have clearly been taught some incorrect theories about how the world works. They have also been raised in a culture that promotes the idea of things like participation trophies and the idea that anyone can achieve anything. A lot of the students we're seeing also appear to have come from relatively wealthy families, and it's likely that they haven't had to face many real hardships, let alone working a difficult or demeaning job. I think it's safe to assume that once they leave college and enter the real world, many of these students will start to mature and realize that the world will not and cannot be made to cater to their feelings. That brings us to the faculty and administration as a possible cause of this problem. The issue I have with blaming faculty, though, is that if you look at the CVs of the faculty encouraging a lot of this kind of backwards thinking, these are the kind of people who never left college. They finish their undergrad degree, then they get a master's degree, then they get a PhD, and then they start teaching, all without ever having to leave the safe bubble of academic life. Their worldview never really gets challenged because they're surrounded by people who work in the same field. In many ways, they're often just as naive and immature as the students they teach. As for the administrators, their power in many cases is actually quite limited. Many colleges rely on donations from alumni and other groups, and so administrators need to cater to the whims of those people if they want to keep their jobs. Public perception also plays a role, and if a college is getting bad press for, say, claims that there's systematic racism on campus, that could seriously harm the school's funding. If administrators clamp down on students and teachers who are demanding things like safe spaces and less white faculty, they may end up facing a backlash from outraged alumni, parents, and the media. So these administrators have to give in to these insane demands from students as a form of self-protection. Sure, they should be willing to risk their jobs to protect academia as a whole, but that's a lot to ask of any one individual. They'd risk a huge part of society calling for their head if they told these students what really needs to be said. And that's the thing. The students themselves, and even the ideologue faculty, would have very little power in these institutions if the wider culture was against them. If the media didn't give them sympathetic coverage, and there weren't massive organizations pushing the same kind of narrative, then we wouldn't be seeing these issues these angry students would see their complaints largely fall on deaf ears. So as long as society as a whole is accepting of this intersectional feminist feelings trump facts mindset, these kinds of problems on campuses are probably going to continue. That being said, I think I have a way this situation could be improved, if not solved outright, and that involves looking at how it came about in the first place. On the most basic level, the main cause of this problem, in my opinion, is a lack of regulation of higher education. It has gotten to the point now where a college degree has the same value in the employment market as a high school degree used to have. This is because too many college degrees have been handed out. Regulations should have been put in place to limit the number of degrees each college could hand out. And more than that, colleges should have been encouraged through funding incentives to hand out mostly degrees involving skills needed in the employment market. In my hypothetical system that I would propose, degrees in STEM fields, for example, would dwarf degrees in social sciences. One issue with handing out degrees to pretty much anyone who couldn't afford to go to college is the fact that not everyone is smart. 
Think about it. If you're a kid with below average intelligence, who you might be able to do okay in school, but which programs do you think you would qualify for at the college level? Would you be able to get into a STEM field? Or would you have to take a less difficult program like, say, gender studies or communications? See, by allowing so many people to get degrees, we've lowered the bar in terms of the intellectual level of the average student. And these students with less than average intelligence are going to overwhelmingly be taking these programs with little to no economic value. What you then end up with is hordes of overeducated simpletons who are doomed to be unhappy because they'll never be able to live up to the standards of a truly educated person. Most of these people would have been much happier had they never been given these unrealistic expectations. They should have been made to come to terms with their limitations and abilities and been encouraged to choose a career that was better suited to them. I mean, how many YouTubers spend their days mocking and refuting, frankly, stupid young people who have educated themselves in feminist theory but don't have the intellect to string together two coherent sentences. The fact is, higher education should be reserved for people smart enough to understand and apply the material properly. The end result of this is that we've got a whole ton of young people who think they belong in high-paying, high-powered jobs working in offices when they'd probably be happier and better suited to working in construction or staying at home raising children because they're simply not smart enough to succeed in a field where intelligence is highly valued. On the flip side of that group, you've got the genuinely intelligent, capable people who have been told by idiotic guidance counselors that they should study whatever interests them most. If you ask a 17-year-old, even an intelligent one, what they want to do for a living, what are the odds that they'll pick a job that is both economically in demand and a fit for their skills and abilities. I'd say the odds are almost nil, yet that's the system we currently have in place. Students are exposed to a very narrow set of information, likely none of which includes things like labor market projections, and they're expected to choose a college degree that will set them up for the future. They're also fed the idea that once they get a college degree, they'll actually be able to find work in that field. As a result of this, you get Thousands and thousands of people taking philosophy, communication, gender studies, history, or similar degrees, despite the fact that none of these degrees is likely to lead directly to employment, and very little of the information taught in those programs is particularly valued by employers. So let's say you're one of these people. You've chosen a program that interests you and graduated with good grades. But now you discover that there's no jobs out there for you. And what few jobs there are are being taken by people with similar education to you but more experience. Now you end up either working at a job that doesn't have anything to do with your degree or one that doesn't require a college education at all, like a service or retail job. Or you just go back to school and eventually become a professor who teaches the same useless information to the next generation. What these people sometimes end up doing though is creating organizations that do fit with what they studied in college. These organizations aren't really filling any actual need in society though. Their main purpose seems to be just to justify their own existence by pointing out societal problems and then starting initiatives to try and solve those problems. They then get government or charitable funding and rarely if ever actually solve any problems. This is usually because the problem they set out to solve isn't really a problem, or their education causes them to look at the problem from the wrong angle. Plus, the organization is probably full of people from that first group with lots of education but little intelligence. So what's the solution to all this? Regulation of higher education. Schools need to be encouraged to offer more economically useful degrees and fewer economically useless ones. This means that less overall people will get college degrees and the ones who do are more likely to get a job. This will also force teens to choose other careers if they can't get into the program they most wanted. We need to get rid of the idea that students should study whatever they're interested in. That's not what college should be for. College should be about learning what you need to know to do well in your future career. If you want to learn about history or philosophy or about feminism, Go to the library in your spare time. Take a course at a private school in your spare time if you can afford it. Watch online videos about the subjects you're interested in. College should be reserved for learning useful things. We should not be selling kids that lie that they can get a job in any subject that interests them. 
If a kid comes to you for advice about what to take in college, get them to take a look at the actual job market and what kind of jobs are in demand and what kind are not. Have them look at those in-demand jobs and see which one interests them the most. That's what they should be pursuing. Tell them to save their interests for their spare time. When it comes down to it, history, philosophy, art, culture, society, these can be fascinating topics. But knowledge of these topics very rarely translates into a job that somebody is going to pay you for. The world has need for only so many historians, philosophers, and cultural critics. So, to fix the problems currently facing higher education, we need to change the system. We need to get rid of the idea and the ability for kids to take whatever program strikes their fancy. We need to regulate schools to keep them from offering so many useless degrees. Only then will there be less of these below average intelligence students being indoctrinated into ideologies by lifelong academics so invested in their theories that they don't really know how the world works at all. So if you're a teenager and you're watching this, I'm here to tell you. No, you can't achieve whatever you set your mind to. You have to take a long, hard look at yourself and your abilities and make a realistic decision based on what you might actually be able to achieve. If you do this right, you might actually stand a chance of being successful and happy. The world is not going to adapt to you. You have to adapt to the world. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. As always, like, dislike, subscribe, or share as you see fit, and I wish you all the best.